So uh, I'm still trying to wrap my head, and I've measured what you've just talked to me about in terms of um, and it, making an impulse uh, measurement of the DML. Mm -hmm. And I've measured, I'd say, hundreds yeah. of conventional devices over my career. And um, I'd like for us to, make, to expand on this because I think it's, it's uh, again, it relates to its behavior mm -hmm. in rooms where you have a lot of reflective surfaces. Yep. And, um, and as it also, I think, uh, explains a lot of, of um, uh, in terms of how it should be measured, how it should be tested, how it should be used. Yeah. So on that screen over there, we have two impulses. The one on the left is actually a very nice woofer, very conventional. This is what I would I'd expect to measure when I take a, a device and I put 2.83 volts into it. Um, very predictable. You see basically the start of the low frequency waveform. Um, and on the right is the DML. So what I'm looking at, uh, at first glance, when I measured it, <laughs> I said, there's something must be wrong. <laughs> yeah. This doesn't really measure like a normal transducer. Yeah. But in fact, it relates to what you were just talking and touching about um, relative to that energy, which is unrelated to the initial impulse, mm -hmm. but is related in terms of intelligibility because it arrives within a window which we feel is uh, more than adequate yep. for the human brain to say, okay, it relates that trailing information that's arriving to my brain is actually completely related to the initial uh, yeah. impulse. And we know from that effect, you know, this energy that comes afterwards just, it, it, it contributes to your brain's um, acquisition of that initial impulse, the energy that comes just adds to that. And that's, you know, that's the, the, the key of the precedence effect is as long as that energy arrives within a certain window, you think it's part of the original signal and it just adds to the um, impression of that signal. But in terms of it... Hey, so there you can see again, it, it's normal when you start, you, you start opening up that window and start looking at it. Uh, you know, I think that's maybe under a millisecond that we're looking at. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, you see yep. the initial impulse and then you see all the following. And now, would it be fair to say that those peaks are related to the, the secondary modal um, characteristics of the panel itself? Yes. I mean, the, the, you know, the waves have spread out from the initial impulse region. Mm -hmm. They've you know, hit the edge of the panel. They're coming back in. There's a, a, a sort of pseudo-chaotic vibration energy in the, in the panel um, for a period of time. And, and that's what you're seeing here. And you, know, you can see it's superimposed, perhaps, on, on, on the lower frequency mm -hmm. um, operation. Perhaps that's below the predominantly diffuse DML region. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, you see that effect and you see the diffuse um, vibration on top of that. The, the, yep. All right, so uh, I understand how that standard woofer or that standard source, you know, because you know, if we measure a mid-range or you measure even a high frequency vice, you get something very similar to what we were just looking at. You get an initial impulse yep. and an immediate, very, very, um, quick decay. Yeah. If it's a good speaker, very, very quick decay. Yeah. Um, you were maybe why don't you draw for me uh, and try to explain how those two devices, how those two sources in a room of let's say let's make it simple, one reflective surface. Okay. And how it would interact with that reflective surface. Yep. Because I think it's very, very important for people to you know, especially guys in our industry, to to understand what's happening because there's. You know, you go to you, you approach someone with this device, and and uh, and you try to explain it. And again, it's my initial impression is okay, it's low Q, but it doesn't behave like a low Q device. Now, low Q devices, uh, you can say, in, let's say it's 110 by 80, or 100, or a 90 degree by 80. Or 120 by 80, mm -hmm. but you know that energy coming off the surface of that device, whether it's horn loaded or front loaded, etc., mm -hmm. at a given frequency, um, you know, we spend most of our lives in ref in highly reverberant, highly reflective energy uh, areas, or um, keeping that energy off the surfaces. Yeah, because the result is disastrous in yes. terms of intelligibility. 
one of the reasons for using a line source is, is of controlling that energy yeah. and putting it over the over the over the audience. Um.